the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction. But it is the very power of God to those who are being saved. The message of the cross is anyone can come to the cross and receive salvation and receive forgiveness by just asking for it. For every single person, we need to have an encounter with this Christ at the cross. Because when you have an encounter with Christ at the cross, you realize and you understand there's nothing you could do. There's nothing you could say. There's no place you need to ever go except to come to the cross and say those simple words, God, I need you. I give my life into your hands. I surrender to you. Forgive my sins. And God says to you, I give you this amazing gift of salvation and eternal life. We've received the salvation. We've met Christ at the cross, but as we are going forward in our journey of following Christ, what does the cross mean to us? Starting with number one, the cross implies death to the old life. That's what the cross stands for. Whenever you talk about the cross, whenever you see the cross, it is a reminder that your old life is now dead. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 6, it says, We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Which means today, you don't have to walk in the bondage of sin. You don't have to struggle in that addiction. Jesus Christ on that cross, once and for all, set you free from every work of the enemy, every power of principalities and darkness. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. The second, the cross implies death to yourself. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. Not only did Jesus die on the cross, this is a spiritual truth you need to understand. You also died on that cross 2,000 years ago. So the next time you're dealing with someone and that old self gets resurrected a little bit and that blood starts to boil, you'll remind yourself and say, you are dead in Jesus' name. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. The third implication of the cross is death to the flesh. And this is a hard one. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, it says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to His cross and crucified them there. Flesh has a way of revisiting us again and again. And that's why the Bible says to crucify ourselves. And so that we leave the crucified there, the Bible says. Finally, number four, the implication of the cross, death to the world. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, the Bible says, As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. To die to the world means that the things that used to be important to you are no longer important to you. The drive for money, the compulsion to have power, the need to dominate, the desire to win at any cost, the lust for sexual fulfillment, the need to dominate people, the desperate search for the approval of others, have all been nailed on the cross. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Jesus said, if anyone would follow me, he should deny himself and pick up the cross. And those words mean exactly what Jesus said, to deny ourselves every single day and to pick up the cross to follow Jesus Christ. That's what it means to us today.